Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today we're going to have a look at an old friend of the channel. The same guy that Wolfie and I catfished last year, Taboo Conspiracy. Now he recently came out with a very interesting video saying that the lack of an Earth's shadow proves that the Earth is flat. Let's go ahead and see what his claim is. For the last few years, globe propagandists have been sharing pictures like these, showing what appears as though Mount Rainier is casting a shadow upwards onto the clouds above the mountain, supposedly proving the Earth is a globe since the sun seems to be at a lower physical angle than the mountain. Here's a simple diagram illustrating the globe claim. The sun is at the bottom left corner. The mountain on top of the ball Earth is casting a shadow upwards onto the bottom of the cloud. If we compare my diagram to an actual photo of Mount Rainier, the globe claim seems plausible. Now, there was a flat earther by the name of P-Brain and I that went round and round on this about a year, year and a half ago. And it got so bad that P-Brain actually falsified some of his evidence to try and prove me wrong. Nobody bought it. Now, Taboo Conspiracy is trying to go down the same path with this, and that is that he put up some ambiguous pictures of the shadow of Mount Rainier being cast on the clouds above it. Now, every single one of them showed the shadow starting at the peak of Mount Rainier, because that's his argument, that the mountain is actually above the clouds rather than below it. So I thought that I would show this one right here. I think that anybody that is honest with themselves can see very clearly that that mountain peak is well below the cloud level and the shadow is being cast upward onto the clouds. There's a continuous cloud deck over the mountain. The shadow is clearly angled upward. I'm going to dismiss Taboo Conspiracy's argument because all he's doing is repeating P-Brain's argument and I've already taken care of that. I'll go ahead and put some of the videos that I did on it in the description below, and you can see for yourself exactly how I did it and how he tried to fake his results. Now, before we go on to his true claim, what I want to do is I want to point out something that disproves his entire point, and he just simply doesn't realize what he's looking at. So let's have a look at the setting sun on a mountain that is clearly above the cloud deck. Now, I want you to watch carefully to the pattern of light on the mountain. Mountains always cast a shadow downwards onto the clouds. There is no upward shadow time lapse filmed from the top of a mountain. You know, I swear this is such a good demonstration of the effect of the sun going down over the curve of the earth. I, I couldn't have done this better myself. Now we're gonna see this again for two reasons. The first one is I really love sticking it to taboo conspiracy because I really dislike people that put nonsense like this out on YouTube. The second one is we just saw a pattern of sunlight on that mountain where the sunlight ascended as the sun went down. Now we're gonna look at the shadow out on the clouds. Now, if the sun is getting lower compared to the mountaintop, that shadow will extend. Let's go ahead and watch it. Mountains always cast a shadow downwards onto the clouds. There is no upward shadow time lapse filmed from the top. I mean, seriously, can you get a better demonstration of the effect than that? The sunlight is coming up and the shadow is extending outward onto the cloud deck because the sun is going down relative to the peak of the mountain. Now in the morning, the exact opposite will occur. As the sun comes up, the shadow will progressively shorten and the mountain will become more and more illuminated. But I've had enough fun with him. Let's move on to his actual claim that I want to address today. But something else has been overlooked in this debate. Let's get back to my diagram. Let's take away the mountain and lower our shadow. Do you see the problem of the globe? There should be a massive earth bulge casting an upward shadow onto the clouds. 
In fact, if the globe were real, we'd see this upward curved shadow cast on the clouds on a frequent basis looking something like this. Have you ever seen an earth bulge shadow on the bottoms of the clouds above you moving rapidly across the sky? I certainly haven't. Well, this seems like rather interesting evidence. Uh, this is a criteria, a testable criteria, that taboo conspiracy is putting out for the flat earth. So, if my understanding is correct, and you guys check me in the comments if I'm not, if we see this, that would be evidence of a spherical earth. If we don't see it, that wouldn't necessarily rule out the spherical earth, but the bottom line is, if we do see it, the Earth is clearly spherical. Now, if that was the sunset and we were looking west, would we expect to see a shadow on the Earth? Well, no, but let's go ahead and see exactly what the shadow would look like. So I put together a little visual aid to help us out. Now, here is the Earth. If the sun is towards the camera, the shadow of the Earth will come out like a cylinder right behind it. Now, what would we expect to see if we were on the ground right here? Let's go to a diagram and look. Now, the first thing that we need to do is have a look and see what the path of light is going to be as the sun sets. Now, as you know, as the sun moves through more and more of the atmosphere, it takes on a reddish tint. So at high noon, with the sun up in this general direction, things are nice and bright and blue. But as the sun sets, it goes from red to purple to black. These are the stages of twilight that we talked about the other day. What if instead we look to the east? Now, as the sun is setting and coming down in this general area, it's going to hit this edge of the earth and it's going to cast a shadow outward. This is the shadow of the earth. This area right here, just above the shadow of the Earth, has got a very long run through the atmosphere that is in sunlight. And like twilight, we will have what's called anti-twilight on the other side. Now, anti-twilight is also called the belt or the girdle of Venus. Let me show you a photograph of this area of darkness down by the ground in an area of twilight or pink sky above it. Now, if you look carefully at this image, which is facing east as the sun sets, you'll see the dark mountains on the horizon. These mountains are not in direct light. You'll see dark sky just above it. And then you'll see this band of pink above that as you look at a steeper angle into the atmosphere, it turns more of this yellowish color. This is a band of twilight, and this is called the Belt of Venus. And the Belt of Venus is a very common phenomenon. It occurs every single night, whether you have a clear view of the horizon or not. You can see an area of dark sky with an area of pink sky above it as you look to the east. That is the anti-twilight. But let's go back and look at the photograph again. What is this area of darkness right here? We are rotating into the shadow of the Earth. This is the shadow of the Earth, exactly what Taboo Conspiracy is asking to see. Now, once again, let's have a look. Here is the line of the sun forming that clear, sharp shadow of the Earth. We are coming in to darkness at twilight, and we can see the shadow of the Earth with the pink above it. And we'll go back to the photograph. Here's the Earth's shadow cast on the atmosphere. This is the lower level of the atmosphere, which is glowing a pinkish red color. And as we look into the higher level of the atmosphere, which has far less air in it, we're not getting as much reflection. Now, unfortunately, this is not the only photograph in existence of the anti-twilight arch in the belt of Venus. Let's go look at some more. Here is a very clear image of it. You see the shadow of the Earth here. You see the belt of Venus just above it. And then you see the thinner atmosphere out in this area here. And here we're getting a little bit more of the atmosphere towards our zenith. Now, here's an excellent image taken from a mountaintop just as Taboo Conspiracy asked for. 
showing the shadow of the Earth, the belt of Venus, and the thin upper atmosphere off in the distance above the belt of Venus. Okay, so here's a very nice image that I took on my drive home um, last spring. I happened to notice that the sun had just set in the west and we're looking to the west. And I noticed these clouds and the pattern of light and shadow on the clouds. So I pulled over and I just snapped a quick picture. Let's go see if we can figure out what we're looking at here. The sun is already set in the west, so this is the period of night called civil twilight. These lower clouds are in shadow. These high cirrus clouds are clearly still in direct sunlight. But that sunlight is passing through a lot of atmosphere, and as a result, the sunlight is picking up a pinkish red tinge. This is something that many of us have seen on our way home. The question is, did we take the time to recognize the beauty of nature and what it was trying to tell us? Well, the only way that this can occur is during civil twilight or nautical twilight. The reason for that is, is that in civil twilight, the sun has set and the center of the sun is six degrees or less below the horizon. As a result, clouds near the ground will be in shadow. Clouds high in the atmosphere will still be in direct sunlight, but that sunlight will be reddish. This will progress into nautical twilight when the center of the sun is between 6 and 12 degrees below the horizon, and then it'll fade as we go into astronomic twilight, which is 12 to 18 degrees, and into night. The last part of our atmosphere that is indirect sunlight is going to be the high altitude clouds. Now, there's one more image that was taken that I found particularly interesting on the internet. And I want to see whether or not everybody can figure out what's going on with this one. Now, this is a truly fascinating image. And it takes a lot of understanding about Earth science and the interplay of light and shadow to understand what's going on. This is a space shuttle launch. And it occurred right at dusk. So the initial rocket plume and the exhaust gas come up and they are in shadow. This is the shadow of the Earth that they're in. Then we have a belt of Venus right here. And then as it continues to go higher, the rocket goes into full sunlight. Notice the change in color. And I want to draw your attention to this dark line, which goes towards the moon and then continues on if you look very closely. Let's see if we can see that a little better. Notice that that shadow extends past the moon. What's casting that shadow? Notice the exhaust plume right here. We have a vertical component that is kind of on our line of sight. And then we have a second component that goes across our line of sight, perpendicular to it. This is the shadow of this part of the exhaust plume. We have a full moon off by the horizon, and the shadow is heading in that general direction in the style of an anti-crepuscular ray. So there's a lot to be learned from this one photograph right here, and it really is a remarkable photograph. Here's our situation. Taboo conspiracy, you put a challenge out, and I have met it. You wanted to see the encroaching shadow of the Earth. I showed it to you. You wanted to see it from a mountaintop. I showed it to you. I didn't do it with one photograph. I did it with a number of photographs, including natural clouds and rocket plumes. So are you going to man up and show intellectual honesty and admit that the evidence shows that your challenge has been met? And will you make a video admitting that. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by. We have an awful lot of people that watch these videos and we've got about 45% of them aren't subscribed. I do appreciate all the new blood coming in, but go ahead and hit that button and hit the subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Stay well. Too deep.
sky. 